In this lecture, we will explore RESTful Data Services in Oracle Apex, which offers a powerful and flexible solution for allowing external clients access to your data. REST stands for Representational State Transfer, and it's basically an architecture that allows two computers to talk to each other using HTTP. Most of the time, the data is transferred back and forth between those two systems using JSON format. REST communicates over HTTP, therefore it uses these standard HTTP methods. A GET looks up information from the service, so that is equivalent to the SELECT SQL command. A POST creates new data, so that is an INSERT. PUT modifies the data, so that is an UPDATE. And the DELETE is a method which is used to remove data. Now let's start the demo. This is the source schema where I have configured a RESTful service by creating module, template and uh, multiple handlers to expose the department table to an external Apex instance for performing DML operations. This is the department table whose data will be exposed to external clients. First of all, you must have an enable schema that you have already done in the previous lecture. Click the modules node. In Oracle RESTful data services, a module serves as a container for grouping related RESTful services together. It provides a way to organize and manage a collection of services under a common namespace and define a shared base path for accessing them. This approach promotes modularity and simplifies the organization of RESTful APIs. Use this button to create new modules. I already have one, so I'll brief its components. When defining a module, several options are available on the module definition page. The module name provides a unique identifier for the module and serves as a descriptive label for the group of services it contains. The base path is a common prefix for the uniform resource identifiers of all services within the module. It defines the starting point for accessing the module services. The full URL is the complete URI for the module, combining the base path with the module name. It represents the root URL for accessing the module's services. The pagination size specifies the number of records to return into one call of the service. Next, you have to create a template by clicking this button. A resource template serves as the basic building block for defining a RESTful service within a module. It encapsulates the behavior of a service, specifying the HTTP method, URI pattern, handler code, and various configuration options to control its functionality. The URI template defines the URL pattern for accessing the RESTful service. It can include placeholder variables to capture specific values from the request URI. For instance, this URI template would allow accessing individual department using their IDs. The full URL combines the module base path being displayed in white color with the resource template shown in red, forming the complete URL for accessing the service. The priority value determines the order in which resource templates are evaluated when uh, multiple templates match a single request URI. A higher priority indicates that the corresponding resource template should be prioritized. This is useful for resolving ambiguity when multiple templates have similar patterns. Here 0 is the lowest and 9 is the highest. 
the http entity tag type specifies how the e tag http header for the resource is generated the e tag is used by caching mechanisms to determine if the resource has changed since the last request different tag types such as version id can be used for caching strategies the comments section allows developers to add descriptive notes about the resource template, providing additional context and explanations for the service's purpose and usage. This can be helpful for understanding and maintaining the code. Next, you have to create these four handlers using this Create Handler button. For each DML action, you would need to create a separate handler. A resource handler serves as the executable component of a RESTful service, responsible for processing requests, implementing the service's logic, and generating responses. It is defined within a resource template and linked to the specific HTTP method for which the service handles requests. The method specifies the HTTP method associated with the resource handler, indicating the type of operation the service performs. For instance, a GET method would retrieve data, while a POST method would create new data. The source type determines how the resource handler's code is defined. It can either be a SQL statement or a PL SQL block to implement the handler's logic. The source section contains the actual code for the resource handler. This code implements the specific actions associated with the service, such as retrieving data from a database, performing calculations, or updating records. In this resource handler, we are using the get method to fetch data of a specific department from the DEPG table by defining this SQL select statement in the source section. The purpose of this query is to retrieve rows from the department table where either the department number matches the specified value or if the value of the bind variable DEPTNO is null to retrieve all rows without filtering on department number. The postfix question mark makes the department number bind variable optional. Here, if we do not provide the department number, all rows will be fetched. This is the put handler that is created to update an existing record. I have defined a PSQL block to perform the update operation. This line sets the value of the status find variable to 200, indicating a successful operation. The use of a status code is a common practice to communicate the outcome of the operation. On line number 12, the value of the status find variable is set to 400, indicating a client error or a bad request. The message specified on line number 13 is displayed when you try to update a department that doesn't exist. And the message on line number 17 is displayed when you do not provide a department number. On line 22, the value of the error message bind variable is set to error message generated by the SQL error message function, providing information about the encountered error. This is a simple example of how to handle errors during the execution of a SQL statement within a PL SQL block, providing status information to the caller. Below the source section, I have defined some parameters for the bind variables used in the PLSQL code. The first parameter handles the department number. This X Apex status code parameter is used by ORDS to pass back the status. The bind variables used in the PLSQL code are used here in the bind variable column to assign values. Let's experience all this in Postman. This is the Postman website. Create a new connection using the REST API basics template. The connection will be created with these four crude operations. First, we are going to test the GET method. Enter the URL endpoint. Remove the bind variable to fetch all records from the department table. Hit the send button. The operation is successful and you see the data with the 200 status. Next, 
test the update operation. For this operation, provide department name and location parameters with respective values. On this occasion, you will receive the bad request error. Because we did not provide a department number to specify which department to update. The error message is rendered from this part of the PL SQL block. Now enter a non existing department number. Once again, you will see the bad request error. Displaying the appropriate message from the PL SQL code. Now provide an existing department number. The record will be updated and you will see the 200 OK status. The update is reflected in the database table. Let's get back to Apex. This is the post handler that we will use to insert new department records. This one also has a PL SQL block to perform the insert operation. I've used three parameters for this handler. This is the delete handler that will allow external clients to remove a department record. Now switch to another Apex instance to create a REST data source. This is the URL endpoint. The data has been fetched successfully. The REST data source wizard created GET and POST operations. Let's create operations for PUT and DELETE. Enter the department number bind variable in the URL pattern to update a specific department. Select the PUT method. And set database operation to update row. The operation has been created for performing updates. Finally, add one more operation to handle deletion.
Now I am going to create interactive report and form pages to test DML operations. Select this REST data source we just created. Select the department number column as the primary key. The interactive report has been configured to get data from this REST source. The form page has also been configured to perform DML operations on the REST source. Run the report page. The get operation fetch data from the department's table. Let's test the other operations. First, create a new record to test the post operation. The new record is inserted successfully. Modify this new record to test the port operation. It is also successful. Finally, test the delete operation. The selected record is vanished. RESTful Data Services empower you to share your data securely and efficiently with external clients. Whether uh, you are exposing data for reporting, integration or collaboration purposes, Oracle Apex provides the tool to design, implement and manage RESTful services that align with your uh, business needs. As you begin to utilize these services, consider the specific requirements of your application and the external clients you intend to serve, ensuring a seamless and secure data sharing experience. The next lecture will demonstrate how to secure these services. Thank you.